Uh, it seems like this is one of the first times I can remember, maybe last year too, where everybody seems to be happy with who the Steelers got. I mean, uh, a lot of people didn't think he would, you know, that he would drop to them. Uh, I don't know. You, you obviously have, have done a lot of scouting and watching film and things. Um, are you concerned about his size at, at tackle, or do you think he's going to be okay? No, I think he's going to be okay. And, and everybody's happy because, like you said, no one thought the caliber player that Troy is was going to be able to be at the pick where the Steelers were at 20. And everybody wanted Mims, but everybody was almost really talking themselves into Mims being that great player and a great pick because he has the attributes. But there was that question, Mark A. You only have a sample size of eight games. Can he consistently perform at that level for an extended period of time, stepping up in a level of play? Even though SEC, they say, is junior NFL, you're still making a step up to the NFL. You've only been doing this at a high level for eight games. Can you extrapolate that for a year and for a career? This guy, Troy Fautano, he's done it. He brings that element of aggressiveness, a guy that is what I call the JYD, a junkyard dog, and that's that element that the Steelers fans implore they uh, and want from their offensive linemen and their teams. Now, when you talk about the height, he, he makes up for his lack of height with arm length. And arm length really, in my opinion, is a little more important than height because sometimes you can be too tall and, and defensive linemen can get under you and you lose lack of leverage. And just basic laws of physics, low man wins. So if you've got a shorter offensive tackle but has longer arms, he can keep the leverage in his favor, but also keep the defensive lineman away from his body and being able to get into his body to alter his leverage because of his arms are so long. So I don't think that 6'3 height is going to be an issue. They've basically uh, uh, been a little bit coy about which side he's going to play, Doug. I mean, it, it sure seems like Broderick Jones is your you know long-term left t uh, tackle. But could you see a scenario where Broderick Jones stays on the right and, and, and Troy goes to the left? I would be a big fan of playing both those guys at both, both positions and find out for yourself. Why guess? Let's find out and, and it show me. Put one at right for first team reps and one at left at first team reps and then switch them and then find out who the best is at the and have the best five linemen out there together instead of just forcing it and saying, well, this is what we think. And then what that does, too, it gives you flexibility if there's injury on the offensive line. Then you can move a guy from right to left and he's not that foreign to that position because he's practiced it. I personally am excited to see during training camp and OTAs and, and mini camps, them doing messing around with a combination of different linemen at different positions. Because again, injuries always happen and you want that comfortability factor. If, if something happens and you have to change that lineup, that the level of production doesn't dip.